Unhappy face it says who so pattern. <laughs> I'm the happiest woman in the world. Mande Kayadabash. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever your location, whatever the time is in your location. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We worship it. God bless you, everybody. How is your day going? We serve an awesome Father. We serve a faithful God. Oh, yes, hallelujah. What a Father we have on Him. Yes. It's 1 p.m. Ah, God bless you. That is afternoon then. <laughs> so it's good afternoon to you. Hallelujah. It's um, it's up five past eight here in Europe. Hallelujah. God bless you. Can we share, please? Share and invite others. Share and invite others. Share and invite others. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. You are my provider. You are my provider. The creator of the world he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We bless you. We bless you. Yes. When men say there is a casting down, I say that there is a lifting up. What a father we have in Jesus. What a father we have in him. What a father we have in him. What a father we have in him. Welcome everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hey, Sister Lois. How are you? How are you? How are you? God bless you. I know you've been busy. We've not had time to talk. We are going to make our time to talk. Hallelujah. God bless every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
It is another time in his presence. <laughs> yeah. I've been studying the book of Numbers and some things. The book of Numbers is heavy. How many of you have read through the book of Numbers? I was going to read, like, for some time, I've been feeling the pressure to know more about this man of God, how they walked with the Lord. And I was studying the life of Moses. I am still studying the life of Moses. Hey, Sister Daniela, God bless you. God bless every one of you. Welcome, everybody. Let's worship him first. Holy he. Hey, Rabba, Baba, Baba, Baba. This is the only thing about YouTube, adverts. They will use adverts to just scatter the whole thing. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Sister Maureen. God bless you. <laughs> I'm a I'm a prince. You are laughing, eh? It's true. These YouTube people, they know how to just carry their adverts and cut into our what we are doing. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, only you are God. There is no one like you, Jesus. Please share and invite others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the the theme of this broadcast today is what do you see? What do you see? Really, what do you see? <laughs> Only you are God. I don't know, my eyes just itching. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, who is like you? There is no one like him, you know. On the earth, in heaven and on earth, there is no like him, Jesus. There is no like him, the giver of life. There is no like him, the ancient of days. There is no like him, the mighty God. Only you are God. You are worthy to be praised and adored. There is no one like you, Jesus. 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 In all the earth, there is no like him. There is no like him. There is no like him. Oh, Reba Bo Shikeri Adabas. Masene Kura Adababa. Rigeli Gele Bo Shidekai God bless you, Sister Rose, for sharing. Can we share, please, and invite others? Oh, Jesus, you know the earth, there is no one like you. You are the King of Kings. Oh, Jesus. There is no one like him. No one like him. No one like him. No one like him in all the earth. No one in the heavens is a king. On the earth, he is a king. He is the Lord. The Lord of Lords. He is mighty. Come on, just to worship him. Worship him before we start. We've started already, but before we go into the word the Lord has for us today, I just want us to lift up our voices and worship him. Oh, my raga, lige, lige, boy, shake it, yanaba. We exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you. Only you are God, we exalt you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. There is no one like you, Jesus. Oh, re baba ba shinde karaba. Oh, re ne kularaba shekeria. Only you are God. Only you are God in the heavens and on earth. Rakaba shinde karaba. Regeli gele gebo sende kayaraba. Mande kuraba sende kayaraba. Only you are God. 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 Only you are God, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Only you are God. You deserve all the glory, Jesus. Makare de bo sende kaya da ba. Rekeli gele de bo shinde kaya da ba shandara. Re ba 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 sende kura da ba 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 ba. Madakure de bo bo sende kaya da ba. 
Oh Jesus, you never fail. You never fail. Do you know that God never fails? He never fails. He's the one that has never failed. The only God that never fails. When man fails, everything else fails, but God never fails. Good evening, Sister Helen. God bless you, ma'am. God never fails. He never fails. He never fails. Oh, that is so good to know. God bless you. I love you too. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Sometimes your comments are so encouraging. You know? God bless you. God bless you. You see the way I laugh. You see the way I smile. <laughs> your comment brought smiles to my face. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. I appreciate every one of you. I'm supposed to be snoozing, cuddling around my husband. I came to remind yeah? you. And I am here. <laughs> the man said, don't tire for me. <laughs> he understands. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> he knows this makes me happy and he doesn't complain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you. 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 Hallelujah. Just worship him. We love you, Jesus. Do you love him? Do you love him? Come on, share, guys. You are not sharing. Some of you are going to your page. You don't have one of my videos. It's not even on your profile. Why is that? And you are supposed to be Christians. You are supposed to be Christians. I go through your profiles. I saw some of you don't even have one of my videos. Not even one. Say one like this. It's not on your profile. It's not on your page. Why? Why? And you love what we are doing here. And you say you message me, oh woman of God, you are such a blessing. Your videos are blessing my life. This is, but how come you don't share to your page, to your people? Are you ashamed to let them know? That you are my follower or that you are following me? Are you ashamed to let people on your page know that you love Jesus? Are you ashamed? Even some of you don't have the video of any man or woman of God on your page. Why is that? Jesus said that if we are ashamed of him, he too will be ashamed of us. If you love what we are doing, you love what God is doing, be free to share his message. You'll be free not to, you know, maybe... You feel in when people see you, they think you are weird or you are a weirdo. That's all. You know, people of this world, they think we Christians are crazy. They think we are not normal. Of course we are not normal. Are you normal? I am not normal. We are not normal. <laughs> we are not normal. When you carry Jesus, you carry the Holy Ghost, you are no longer normal. If you are normal, that means you are like the world. There is nothing different about you. But if there is something different about you, they look at you as a weirdo. They look at you like you are weird or crazy, or something is wrong with you. Why? Because what gives them pleasure no longer gives you pleasure. They club, you don't like to club. They drink, you don't like to drink. They smoke, you don't like to smoke. What? We are a peculiar people. We are different. <laughs> the Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not of the world. We are in this world. <laughs> that is why we are different. That is why if you are a Christian and nobody thinks you are crazy, then you have not started. Because there is nothing normal about us. <laughs> we are supernatural. <laughs> there is nothing normal about us anymore. Because the way God leads us is different. The way we act is different. Where do we explode over here? We will be smiling like... <laughs> They'll be asking, are you okay? They say, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Why? Because the Holy Ghost is in you, controlling you, not your emotions. <laughs> hey, some of you, why then is it that you are ashamed to share our gospel? And we are here praying for you. You are answering amen. <laughs> you are ashamed. Some of you don't have one of my videos. Some people on this platform, they don't even have the video of anybody. No preaching, no message, no gospel on your wall. And you are born again. That is not right. There is something not right about that. Please check it again. There is something not right. If you are not bold to use your platform for God, for God, 
That is all my platform is for, for the gospel. But nothing else to share. What am I? What else am I sharing? Apart from the gospel, all those uh, comedians or sharing all those uh, jokes that will not take anybody to heaven or sharing one thing or the other that is not relevant to the kingdom of God. Come on. I can share some other things like I'm on holiday. I can choose to share my pictures, my videos with you. Just so you see what I'm doing. That is different. But hey, share the gospel. Even you personally. You have not even dropped a message by your own self on your own page that you are a child of God. Are you ashamed for people to know that you are a Christian or a born again Christian? I don't get that. That is that I just couldn't understand that really. I couldn't understand it. If you love God, you will want to announce him. You will want to broadcast him. You will want to tell everybody around you that you are a lover of God. You want people around you to see and know that you have relationship with your father. You'll be bold to, to share a Bible verse, a quote or something, even my videos, so that people can be blessed. Do you know how many people have been on this platform and they got deliverance? They got delivered. Though many of them have walked away, me, I'm not a talk. I give them six months. If they are not steadfast, those demons are coming back times two. That time they'll start running back. Mm -hmm. Let us share the word of God. Hallelujah. Be bold to share the word of God. Let the world know that you are a child of God. Let them know that you love God. <laughs> Sister Peck says she drives them crazy. Keep sharing it. Because that is your own evangelism. You are evangelizing. The Bible says we should do the work of an evangelist. Do you know that? We are all evangelists. You are an evangelist as much as I am an evangelist. Oh, that maybe me. Oil was poured on my head. I was anointed as an evangelist. Especially anointed as an evangelist doesn't mean that you yourself, you are not an evangelist. God has given every child of God a mandate to do the work of an evangelist. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. It is true that God will specifically or specially anoint some of us as evangelists with the oil poured and prayed for and have this one, blah, 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 like that. Many evangelists will go to hell. That oil they poured on our head will not take us to heaven. He that wins a soul, even one soul, he that wins a soul is wise. He that wins souls are wise. So be wise and be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. Just take a minute and just appreciate God. Let's begin to ask him for mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just appreciate you. You slept last night and you are here this morning. <laughs> begin to appreciate God for your life. Begin to thank him for your life. Begin to thank him for his goodness, for his grace, for his mercies. Begin to appreciate him for whom he is. He is the Alpha, the Omega. Oh, my God is too good. You know, I have my own testimonies. Do you know that even as I'm doing the work of God, he's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. You see, my daughter, my daughter just did her living set, right? The last uh, living set. Let me share my own testimony with you guys. So you will see how faithful God is as well. My daughter left this holiday because her, her result is coming out today. She refused to stay with us. So 16 years old, going on 17, my second daughter. She just did her GCSE now. In this last GCSE this year. So the result, result was, is coming out or was coming out today or is already out today. My daughter left yesterday. She said she would not stay with us. She gave up her holiday for her, her resort. She wants to be in school to collect it. And I was saying to her, but you can collect it when we get back on Monday. She said, no. She wants to be there when the resort comes out. And this morning she went to school to get her resort. My daughter was crying. <laughs> and I'm not there <laughs> to, to, to hug her. Her father is not there. No family of the member is there to congratulate her. She was crying. She was like saying, Mom, I did more than I, I expected. I said for my mom, I said, Lion Peking, not, Lion not a born lizard. I beg you, I don't see where Lion born lizard. It is not possible. I and all that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. 
you know my daughter her lowest mark is b all her marks is her result is here she sent it to me a star double a stars a stars a a stars a just maybe like two b's uh no c no even c in her result no c please join me to celebrate god for my daughter i am just so proud and my second daughter is doing my first daughter is doing nothing her result came out again today pm she's on to her next level this god loves me too much when i'm saying that he loves me too much you guys don't understand it you don't understand look at my daughter's results she sent me oh you can't see it let me see you see that a star triple a star double a star a a a star only one b level two distinction everything distinction is is a star double a star only one b only one b that is what god can do that is what god can you guys may not understand why i am so happy I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. He loves me too much. <laughs> We are having a, a seminar next week, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and it is about raising godly children. Then I will tell you the rest of this term, testimony. There was a time me and this girl, we are punching. <laughs> there was a time this girl told me, I hate you. But today, ha. <laughs> you will hear the rest of the testimony during the programs. <laughs> you will hear the rest of the testimony so you know you are not alone we come out here we carry our bible we preach we pray for you god is moving but you don't know what we go through on the inside <laughs> you don't know what we go through you think the devil is happy with us no he's not and i'm going to tell you the principle that i used me <laughs> I refuse. That is what. What do you see? Is our topic. I may probably share the testimony today. Whatever. No, I'm not back home yet. We are coming back on Saturday. We are coming back on Saturday. Oh, my God is too good. The God we serve is faithful. This girl is not online, my God. There is a sister here. She doesn't want to come public. I've just been so burdened about her since morning. I started praying for her yesterday, last yesterday evening. Now they want to kill her with suicide. The enemies wants to kill her with suicide, and she's not online yet. I was praying for her yesterday. I was praying for her yesterday. And I've been messaging her then. She cut off the deliverance yesterday. And the enemy said they want to kill her with suicide. And she's already said she got a rope to kill herself. But something always stops her. And I've been messaging. She said she was going to continue today. Because she came out of the deliverance because the one of her child was knocking on the door. And I've been so burdened because the, de the demon was saying yesterday, she must die. She must die. And me, I want to get that deliverance over. Because I don't want her to die. I don't want her to kill herself. And I've been chasing her since morning. Even I was home, I didn't go out. I just managed to go to the swimming pool. Came back so quick. Just I didn't even stay long because, huh, so that we can continue the deliverance. But I've not even seen her. I've been messaging her. <laughs> you saw Papa. <laughs> he went to the kitchen. Uh, 
Jesus. Just listen to okay. so this wicked demon. You what? I'm going to kill her. You are going to kill her. This was okay. last night, too. So. You what? I'm going to kill her. You are going to kill her. Why? I'm going to make sure she kills herself. You want to make sure she kills herself? Why? What did she do? Just listen to this, so. She has not even listened to this video. And then she came out of the deliverance. She just woke up from it. And since I've been chasing her since yesterday. And if you see this girl's messages to me, she feels like killing herself. She feels like hanging herself. She says she actually got a rope. That is how wicked. That is how wicked the devil is. And since morning, since morning I've been chasing her, chasing her. I did not even do anything serious today. I didn't even leave this resort. I've been inside waiting for her till like four. Messaging her. Me that is me that want to pray for somebody. I'm the one messaging. Messaging and messaging and messaging. And she's still she's not even here. I've sent her this. I've just been messaging her since morning because her life is in danger. If she does not get delivered from this demon, they are pushing her to suicide. They've used everybody around her to frustrate her life. They want to kill her. And she said she's going to kill herself. And she's... Let me read some of her comments. You see, when you say she doesn't know what's going on, that she feels like killing herself. How many of you are like that? You see people that are, that are suicidal. There's not them all. There are demons pushing them to... Pushing them to kill and destroy themselves. Until now that I came out, I've been calling, 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 messaging, messaging, messaging. She said, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let me do this so that I'll do this. She's a lie. I've been burdened about her since, and I don't like when I feel like this about people. It means something is about to happen. I'm ringing her. Reba Bush, Linde Kuyadabas. Please leave a message. Hmm. It's been like that since morning. And it's not making me happy. Because her life is in danger. Hallelujah. I'm just going to continue. I pray that um, there's another sister too having the same issue. I forgot her name now. She's new. I don't know if she's here online. I thought I was going to pray for her when I come online. Uh-huh.
Sorry, there's two of them. This is another one today. And I thought I was going to pray for her tonight. But she's not online. I've sent her the link and I've sent her messages. I hopefully they come online so we can pray for them. Glory to Jesus. That devil is a bastard. Wicked bastard. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's just take a minute to worship you. Worship him. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. I'm going to commit that sister into the hands of God. Father, have your way. Touch her, protect her, keep her, encounter her. In the mighty name of Jesus, that demon pushing her to kill herself. We bind them together in the name of Jesus. And we surrender them useless and powerless in her life, in her body. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We send them to her where they belong. Father, set her free. Cause her, oh God, to come online. Cause her, oh God, to contact me, oh God, tonight, anytime. Father, for her to be completely free. In the name of Jesus. And I commit this sister, Joanna, into your hands as well, Lord. That you will cause them to cause her to come online also. Keep them, oh God. Protect them from the plots of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Father, we cover them in your blood. We cover them in your blood. Wanko and Joanna, you are covered in the precious blood of Jesus wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God does not take pleasure in the death of of anybody, whether sinner or non-sinner. It does not please God. Hallelujah. I was praying, oh, the demon was already manifesting and talking, and somebody started banging on the door. Boo, 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 boo. That was how she woke up from that. She just came up like that. And then she said, immediately, I'm coming. She switched off the phone and went away. Till now. Pray that God will have mercy in the name of Jesus. What do you see? Lord, we commit this hour to you. Oh, let's just take one minute. I still feel like we have not worship. I don't know. Let's just take two minutes. I'm going to time it two minutes, just two minutes to worship the Lord. And then I'm going to pray, then we start. I'm timing it. It's 34 now. When it's 36, we are going to start. Just worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Only you are God. 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 Raka yende de de boy shikiri gabas. Raba ba shinde kaladaba senderia. Only you are God. Jesus, we worship you. Makari de de boy shikiri gabas. Let's worship the Lord for two minutes. Ma sende kura dabas. Rekeri ge de boy sinde kaladaba shikiriya. Raka ba 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 sinde kaladaba. Ma sende kaya dabas. Raka li de boy kende de de de. You are God, you are God, you are God forever. You are God, you are God forever. You are God forever, you are God forever. Mask in the Kaya da Boy, she carry at a Baba Baba. Reba Baba, sin the Kalada Bos, can the Rede. Reke Mashikari at a bass in the Kula da Bash. Yende Braga Baba Baba, you get a Galega Bos, can the Rede Bosch. Mande Kaya da Bas in the He. Lord, you deserve all the glory. Rende the Boy, she carry. Raka baba ba sende kura da ba sende kala da ba reke baba sheke di gara gabos kende de bosh only you are God Jesus only God only you are God there is no one else kara da bosh you are the creator of the universe you are the creator of the world blessed be your name Jesus blessed be your name Jesus ma kare de bosh sende kala da ba oh reke baba ba papa we can see you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let your name be praised forever. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Only you are God. Let your name be praised. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we cover this platform in the blood of Jesus. Cover everybody in the blood of Jesus. All we are going to do here today in the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. Teach us your word, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Papa is making dinner. <laughs> Papa is wearing open gloves. <laughs> is he ready now? 
<laughs> dished. Ah, I love my husband too much. This one too much. Eh? <laughs> he's making dinner. I started the dinner, but then I had to come online, so he's finishing it for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Divine, go and have your food. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see, brethren? What do you see? Tell me what do you see. If I ask you now, about yourself, about your life, about your future, what do you see? What do you see? What do you think about? How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? You know, like I said in the beginning, I am reading the book of Numbers. For me, I'm just on the book of Numbers. I started from chapter 1, now I'm on chapter, I'm on chapter 14. And this morning, I was just reading chapter 13, and things were just jumping at me. By the way, the Lord gave me, I, I got the Holy Ghost better something in me today. I don't know when it's going to start, but we are going to be having retreats on this platform, not retreat online. <laughs> we are actually going to be traveling for retreats. I was telling one of my sweethearts, one of my sister here today that it was better in me today. God was just speaking to me. I see, I see us in ministry, blessing people with God's word. Hallelujah. We are going to be having women in ministry retreat. And it's going to be in different chapters all over the world. That is what God gave me this morning, today when I was, this morning when I was having my time with him. I was just writing it. See, I was just writing and writing everything the Holy Ghost was saying to me. I was very tough by the pray mommy. Is it tough or touch? I don't know. Maybe there is a type error there. And God was just speaking to me about that. Women in ministry retreats. We are going to have the Europe chapter once a year. We come to Europe. We then, we want, then the second one is going to be, Amer second chapter is Canada and America. And the third chapter is going to be in Africa once every year. Who is excited about that? If you know you are gifted for ministry, you are called for ministry, you are you're already in ministry, you are a pastor's wife, or even though you are not a pastor's wife, but you have a calling, or you feel, you sense that you have a calling. This is the things we're going to be doing. And we're going to be, there will be guest speakers. Just come somewhere, maybe like in this resort, just take rooms or anywhere in Europe for those in Europe. Then we'll have it again once a week, once a year too for Canada. Canada and, and America. Is that that we hold, host it in Canada or we host it in the US? Those of you in Canada and America, you come together, invite pastors' wives, those that are in ministry or those that are being led into the ministry. Yes, 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 you are. Prayer intercessors are in ministry. Christian authors are in ministry. Ministry is very broad. It's not only when you come here to preach that is ministry. Ministry is very, very broad. So if you are gifted in any of this, then this will be good for you. And then we are going to be having workers retreat once a year. I don't know where it's going to be, whether in... Europe or America, Canada, Africa, or in the UK. I don't know where it is going to help. Me too, I'm hungry, okay? I have a like to eat, oh. Me too, I'm hungry. I'm not eating. I need to eat. You know, but this is what the Lord was, that, this was bettered in me today in my place of prayer this morning. And I was just writing what the Lord, even the Lord was giving me themes or topics. You go and get your passport ready. It might start next year. God is going to tell us when we are going to start. How many of you would like to attend such retreats? It will do you a whole lot of good. It will help you in ministry. It will bring out the gifts or your calling in ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, his grace is enough for us. If he's giving me this vision, he will make a way. The only thing is for him. The only thing is for him to like, you know, he's going to give me more insight. 
this was just like introduction to it but i'm just introducing it to you and i'm going to be praying about it when the time comes we are going to do it so for those of you in africa we are going to do it in africa i want to even help host i had a dream about it wow wow look at that i'm trying to read your comments yes i want to help host i had a dream about a woman conference i had set up a couple months ago wow wow isn't that amazing so get ready now you're going to be hosting one co-hosting one <laughs> maybe the first one will be in canada maybe the next one for the following year is once a year once a year for each ch chapter once a year for europe europe uk and ireland is together once a year for africa once a year for canada and america on all the province in that area and i know god will do it that is the vision he gave me today and it will come to fulfillment. Hallelujah. I told you that I am not like every other evangelist you see on Facebook. My own areas of calling is different. <laughs> I am different. I am different. What do you see as a person, as a woman, as a child of God? What do you see? How do you see yourself? What do you see about yourself? What visions do you see about yourself? How? What? 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 What do you see? When you look, when you browse, whether in the physical, when you browse, whether in the spiritual, what do you see? 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 What you see matters. You cannot pray what you don't see into existence. The Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks, as you are thinking right now, what you're thinking about yourself, that is how you will be. That is how you already are. So tell me, what do you see? Some people see themselves as useless. Some people see themselves as failures. Some people see themselves, check. As whatever inadequate, what do you see? Some say, ah, you have failed already. Hmm? What exactly do you see about your own self, about your future, about your life? Where do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Hey, Sister Tamata, Joanna Tamata, welcome. I was expecting you. Welcome, welcome. Because I'm going to pray for you. You know, I told you I was going to pray for you. Just be patient, okay? After the message, I'm going to invite you and I'm going to pray for you, okay? That demon of death chasing your life. We are going to chase it to hell today. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, darling. Welcome. She's new. Everybody welcome her. She joined us today. She's new on this platform. What do you see? What do you see? How do you see yourself? Do you base yourself what you see? Do you base what you see? What you see, what do you see? Do you base what you see on what is happening to you at the moment? Or do you base what you see on the trust of God, on the promises of God, on the things of God, on the word of God? What exactly do you see? What does it look like? It looks like I'm looking that way. <laughs> what exactly do you see? Where do you see yourself? Where do you see your family? Where do you see your children? Failure, rejected, this one, that, everything negative. What do you see? Because if you cannot, I just told you now, God is just giving me a vision. Is it a vision? No, it's not a, a, a vision. And I see that. Then if I don't see it happening, how do I pray it into existence? How do you pray it into existence? What exactly do you see? How do you see yourself? <clears throat> Let us go to the Bible. Let's go to Numbers 13. Let's go to Numbers 13. What do you see? 
The word of the Lord came unto Moses in, can you type for me, Numbers chapter 13. We are just going to be reading random, we are just going to be skipping it, but read the whole of Numbers 13. Even unto 14. Numbers 13. Sorry guys. Hmm. Numbers 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Numbers 13, yes. And then I'm going to skip. Now, the Lord gave Moses instruction. To send some people into a land he was going to show them. And then when you read from verses 1 down to 16. He, it, he's talking about the people that Moses chose, chose to go spy the land. And so we are going to jump to verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out. These people is their names. When you read uh, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of uh, Jephunah, of the tribe of this Issachar, um, the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, that was the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin. So all those places talking about the people that Moses chose together that he was about to send forth. And verse, seven, nine, uh, verse 17 says, And Moses sent them. To spy out the land of Canaan. And said unto them. Get you up this very. This way southward. And go up into the mountains. And see the land. What it is. And the people that dwell therein. Whether they be strong or weak. Few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in. Whether it be good or bad. Or what cities they be that they dwell in. Whether in tents or in strongholds. Or what the land is. Whether it is fat or lean. Whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage. And bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first uh, um First ripe grapes. This is the season of harvest of these fruits, grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness. Let me go because I'm reading uh, with the NIV, I mean King James. Let me open Rakabo Shekiria. Father, we worship your name. Masking the boy shaking you. So now Moses sent them forth. Go spy the land. And these people they went and they spied the land. They spied the land. So they went and explored the country. They went to explore, they explored the area. From the desert of Zin to Rehob and Lebo Hamat, they entered the country through the neck. They spied the whole land. We are going to jump because of time. Now, the men explored that country for 40 days. This is not a journey of one day or two days. It took them 40 days, which is one month and 10 days, a month plus. To spy the whole of that land. And they went back to the camp after, the, after carrying out the instructions. The Israelites were camped near Kadesh in the desert of Paran. The men went to Moses and Aaron and all the Israelites. They told Moses, Aaron and other people what they saw and showed them the fruit from the land. They brought fruit from the land. The men told Moses, now this is what they saw. Remember this topic. What do you see? What do you see? You, what do you see? What do you see? Hallelujah. What do you see? The men told Moses, we went to the land where you sent us. It is a land filled with many good things. Here is some of the fruit that grows there. But the people living there, okay. Now this is what they saw. This is what they saw. He says that is filled with many good things. So, 
That is the first thing they saw. The land is filled with many good things. This is the fruit that we brought. But, there is a but. But, the people living there, but the people living there are very powerful. The cities are very large and strongly defended. We even saw some Anakites there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live near the sea and by the Jordan River. This is what they saw. This is their report. The land is beautiful. The land is good. The fruit is very ripe. The fruit is yummy. Oh, yes. I am called to be this. I know I can be this. Yes, the Lord has shown me. This is what I ought to be. Oh, yes, in the future. I am called to be in ministry. Oh, yes, but. Oh, yes, I am very intelligent. I am, the Lord is teaching me or telling me that I am a medical doctor. But. Oh, the Lord is telling me that I am going to be married, uh, has given you a promise that you are going to be married very soon. You are going to be having your own children. But what is the but in your situation? What is the but in your life? What is the but that is preventing you from taking your next leap? What is that but that is preventing you from taking the next leap into your own destiny? What do you see? <laughs> they said these people, we saw these people, the land is good, it's fruitful, it's very good. But the only problem is that, is that the people there, they are too strong, they are too powerful. powerful. Wait a minute, what about God? Wait a minute, who delivered them from the Egyptians? What a minute, what about he that is like a cloud following them in the day? And fire by night protecting them and keeping them. But, but what? But what? These same people are tall. These same giants. How big is your issue? Your problem? They are created by God. Is God not the one that created them? But, that is we today. Ah, the Lord is telling you to do this. Take this faith, uh, leap of faith. Ah, but, ha, ah, God, hey, ha, ah, how can, don't you see? But God is saying, go, I am with you, ah, God, but, but, what is that but that is preventing you from coming into the promises of God for your life? But, today we kill every spirit of but in our lives and situations in the name of Jesus. Caleb told the people near Moses to be quiet. I love Caleb. Then Caleb said, we should go up and take that land for ourselves. We can easily take, this, take that land. But the men who had gone with him said, we cannot fight those people. They are much stronger than we are. So this man gave a report that discouraged the people. They came with a report that discouraged the people of God. Which report is discouraging you today? What is that report that is preventing you today? Ah, Africa, not good though. If you go there, you will die. Hey, evil report. What is that report? Hey, you want to go to, you want to relocate to Europe, huh? Good luck, oh, you're on your own. If God says go, what is that situation? They were looking at the difficulty. They were looking at the physical things. They were looking at the immediate. But they forgot to look at the supremacy of God in that situation. But God was the one that sent them. God sent them. But Caleb told them. They may, <laughs> Caleb said we can do it. We can easily take. We can easily take that land. But the men that went, they were of little faith. They begin to give encounters, reports that would discourage the rest, the rest people. They were all faithless. The reports began to discourage them. The land we saw is full of strong people. They are strong enough to def easily defeat anyone who goes there. We saw the giant Naf Naflim. 
people there. The descendants of descendant of Anna come from the Nephilim. We felt like little grasshoppers. Yes, we are like grasshoppers before them. We were like grasshoppers to them because they were giants. We are like grasshoppers before them. Look at their reports. Look at their reports. Whose reports are you believing? Whose reports? Let me call you Olodo. Which Olodo? Yeah, you want to be a doctor? Hey, 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 hey. You, you that cannot understand anything. How are you going to read and become a doctor? What is the stumbling block before you? What is the stumbling block before you? What is the bot in your life? What do you see? Now, different set of people went out to spy land. These people came with the good news that the land was good, flowing with milk and honey. This land has good fruit. But the only thing is that the people there are giants. The people there are tall. The people there are big. So what? Are they bigger than their God? But they refused to look. They were no longer looking at how powerful their God is that delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians. That same God that was leading them, we read in verse 11, uh, chapter 11 previously, the gods that came to them as a, as a cloud of protection, they forgot the power of that God. They forgot the abilities of the God, of our God. They forgot everything that the Lord has done. They were not looking at their problems. They were not sitting at their problems. They were not magnifying their problems. Problems. Look, these men are huge. These men are giants. We are like grasshoppers. They will just march us down. How big is that situation? You are looking at that mountain before you. And you are thinking, this mountain I cannot climb it. This mountain is just too high for me. This mountain is so, so, so rocky. This mountain is so slippery. Hey, I am going through my waters. This water will swallow me up. This water will overshadow me. Says who? Have you forgotten the size of your God and his promises. They began to doubt the ability of their God. They began to doubt. And God hates it when people do that. Hmm. When you go to verse 14, chapter 14, Numbers chapter 14, I told you I'll be skipping. He says, that night all the people in the camp began shouting loudly. They began to panic. They began to fear. The Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron. All the people came together and said to Moses and Aaron, we should have died in Egypt or in the desert. Did the Lord bring us to this land? To be killed in war. They were already afraid. Fear has taken place. Fear has taken over them. Fear has already taken over them. Doubt has taken over them. These same people witnessed the Egyptians drown in the sea. They witnessed God killing the Egyptians in the sea. And these same people are fighting and quarreling with Moses. Ah. Don't you see? Did you not see? Did you not see that one? Did you not see this one? Eh? So you just brought us out of Egypt so that we come and die in war here. They began to complain. They began to murmur. They began to grumble. They began to fight the pastors, the man of God. Are we not like them? Are we not small thing? We magnify our problems above God. We see it as impossibilities. Says who? Who told you that that situation is bigger than your God? The size of every problem is under the, 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 the source of my father. Why then are you afraid? Why then are you afraid? God is telling you, go and start a business. You are so scared. God is telling you, go for that job. You are not qualified for it. Yes, but God says, go apply for it. You are so scared. You are looking at your limitations, which is your CV. You are looking at your, your resume. You are looking at your degrees. And God is telling you, son, daughter, forget about that. You go and apply. How would you say people apply for jobs that they are not qualified for? But when the divine hand of God is involved, they take them and train them for that job. Why then are you afraid? Why then are you afraid? 
God is telling you to take a leap into something. You are looking at how, how, how would that be possible? How can that be? That thing that God is telling you to take a leap into, it is bigger than you. It is too mighty than you. What a bad God that sent you. Have you forgotten the size of your God? You begin to look at these things. Ha, me? Ha, no. Ha. I don't want to die here too. When God says go, do you think God will watch you die? Do you think God will just sit back? They began to complain. They began to fight Moses. They began to grumble. They began to complain. Are we not like that? You begin to see yourself like grasshopper in the midst of that difficult situation. Ha! God, did, did, did the Lord bring us to this land? Why would God, is God wicked that he would tell me to go and do that? That he would tell me, ah, ah, God, are you wicked? Some people begin to quarrel and fight God, though. They call God wicked God. Say, this God, you are wicked, though. This God is wicked, though. Why would God not tell me to go and do this? Ah, but, ah, God, you just look finished. It's me that you go and send to go and do this particular thing. Why? Because he knows you can do it. Why? Because he has endowed you with the ability, ability to do it. Me sitting here today never knew I can do what I am doing today, last year. But all I did was take a step of faith according to his leading, according to his directions. And here I am today. Doctors are sitting under me to listen. People more worthy, more qualified, academically, they are here. Teachers, people with degrees, they are here listening to me. When you do not, when you underestimate the power of your God, what the, that is why most of us are stagnant. You are just on the spot. These people were ready to remain in this camp. They were not ready to take a leap into the next level. You are afraid to step into the next level. Even though God is telling you to step. You are afraid to take a leap into your next level. Even though God is telling you, hey son, take a leap. Daughter, take a leap. You are afraid to take your leap. You are afraid. Said God wants to keep them. They began to quarrel. They began to fight. Even Joshua and Caleb became upset. Moses and Aaron bowed low to the ground in front of other people as they gathered there. Look at that. The servants of God were embarrassed. Joshua and Caleb became very upset. These two men said to all the Israelites gathered there, Caleb and Joshua said to them, The land that we saw is very good. It is a land filled with many good things. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us not, he will lead us into that land and he will give that land to us. Look at faith speaking. This is what I call faith. He will give that land to us. So don't turn against the Lord. Don't be afraid of the people in that land. We can defeat them. They have no protection. Nothing to keep them safe. But we have the Lord with us. So don't be afraid. Look at encouragement. Caleb and Joshua were encouraging them. These two men were saying to them, if the Lord is happy, is pleased, he will deliver them into our hands. Look at something else. They have no protection, but we have protection. The cloud protects us. The light keeps us safe in the night. The God we serve is big. These people, this land is good. This land is rich. And we can defeat them. We can defeat them. Let us go. Let us go. That is faith talking. This one was trying to encourage them. Hallelujah, Jesus. So he was even advised, don't turn against the Lord your God. Because of this situation, it is when you are in that situation, you know who truly loves God. You will fall down. You will backslide. You will fall by the wayside. God has not answered you. Oh, God has chosen not to answer you. Harakapo shekeli adabaz. Look at that. This is for you today. Numbers 14, 1 to the end. Can somebody type it as well? Numbers 13 and 14, 1 to the end, both of them. This is verse 7. That verse 7 to 9. 
Say, but we have the law with us, so don't be afraid. Fear is not of God. Doubt is not of God. Why are you afraid of that situation? Why are you afraid to take that leap? Why are you afraid to take that stand? Why are you afraid to obey what the Lord is telling you to obey? Why are you afraid? Makari de boshin de kalarabas. Jesus loves us too much. He loves you. See, and all the people began talking about killing Joshua and Caleb. Look at that. Too. You see how people are. They don't want good advice. They don't want good counsel. They want to kill this man for telling them the truth. They want to kill these people for, for telling them that God is able to deliver them. They want to destroy their lives. I don't care. I don't care to know what your situation is. I don't care to know what is happening in your life. But me, I want you to know that the God you serve is able to deliver you. That demon, those powers from, from, from wherever, pushing you to destroy your life, pushing you to kill yourself. Today, the Lord will destroy them before you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you need to believe and have faith that the God you serve is mighty to save. God is mighty to save. God is mighty to save. God is mighty to save. Makantari de Boishikeria. God is mighty to save. There is no situation that he cannot handle. There is nothing too hard for him to do. The God we serve, he is mighty. He is mighty. He is mighty. They began because they, you know how people don't like to hear the truth. Haven't you noticed? You will tell somebody the truth, they, you become their enemies. You will tell somebody the truth, you become their enemies. Even somebody tell you the truth, you too, they become your enemies. Because you don't want to hear the truth, they tell you this thing you are doing is wrong. Don't go this way. Go that way. The Lord is leading me to tell you. Don't go this way. You go that way. You become angry. Why are you telling me? Oh, you want to show me that you know better than me? The God we serve is mighty. Karadaboshi keliadabas. The God we serve is mighty to save. The God we serve is mighty. He is a big, big God. People don't like to hear the truth. When you tell them the truth, you become their enemies. Hey, but me, if you don't tell me the truth, if you are my friend, I always say this, if you are my friend and my mouth is smelling, you are there, you are doing your nose, you didn't even tell me because you don't want to hurt my feelings. You don't want to tell me that my nose, my mouth is smelling so that I can go and brush very well. And then you are going out. Maybe when I talk, you carry your nose because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to perceive the aroma. And then you go. And then someone else, I speak, maybe I will go together in public and I talk. And that one says, ah, ah, sis, did you not brush this morning? Your mouth is smelling, you know. Did you not brush? I will love that person with all my heart for telling me the truth. And you that is there pretending. You did not tell me before I left the house that my mouth was smelly. Are you my friend? Then? No, you are not. Such a person is not my friend. Because if that kind of person see you, you want to enter fire, the person will just kukuma push you into the fire. You see that one that told me the truth? Ha, ah, sis, your mouth is smelling. Did you not brush? That is my friend. Because if that person sees me going into fire, that person will try me. Ah, don't go there or that place there is fire. You see those ones that pretend, what about you? Are you like that? You don't like to tell people the truth. Uh-huh. In a good way, not in a bad way. What about you? Do you tell people the truth? That is on this platform I have to tell you the truth. You know why? I am accountable to you. I cannot come here and begin to tell you what God did not tell me. I cannot come here and begin to lie. Because I want to make you feel good. You know, that is what people like these days. Let me come and say, hmm, 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 the Lord is telling me somebody. I see you in a pot. They want to pound your head in there. I put fear in you. Put fear in you. But that is what people want to hear in this generation. <laughs> That's why I say, ah, I see you. They tied you in the covo. They are about to cut off your head and use you for dinner. In that which is covered. I have to pray for you. I pray. That is what people want to hear these days. That is what people want to hear these days. 
They don't want to hear the truth. I tell you every day, brethren, you are a prophet unto your own self. Prophesy, thou son of man, Jesus. God told Ezekiel in the valley of the dry bones. Prophesy to those bones. You can prophesy to yourself. You are a prophet unto yourself. If you know whom you are, the authority you carry, the power you have in Jesus, you will stand and you will say to that mountain, move. And the Bible says that mountain will move. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can speak to your mountains. The children of God, they were so afraid. They were so scared. They were so scared of the giants in the land that they went to spy. But they were no longer, they no longer remember the God that delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians. When trouble came, they were even asking, why did you not, every little thing, why did you not leave us in Egypt? Is it because there is no food in Egypt? That is how we go back to our vomit. Because you are serving God for what you want him to do for you. For what you can get from him. And God knows our heart that the reason we are serving him is because of what we want to get from him. And then he holds it a little while just to test you to see if you will still love him when he did not give it to you. That is when people flop. They fall and fall flat. This God is not, not real. This God, this God, he, he is too fake. If, if, why does it, you begin to murmur, you begin to grumble, you begin to complain, and God looks at you and he shakes his head. He shakes his head. Because he expected more from you. When God told Moses, send men and to go and spy that land. Do you think God does not know what is in that land? Do you think God does not know that there are giants in that land? Do you think that God did not know what is going on in that land? But he did it to see their heart and the condition of their heart and they failed him. Have you failed God? Have I failed God? When God decides not to, to do it the way we want, it, want him to do it. You know how most of us, we want everything on a platter of gold. Everything on a platter. And God chooses not to answer us on a platter. We say God is wicked. You begin to complain. You begin to murmur. Ah, woman of God. Mm, mm, mm. It is well. That your it is well is in your tongue, not in your heart. It is well. Mm, it is well. Mm, I believe it is well. What is well? Act it. Don't just speak it. You speak it is well. But your character is saying it is not well. You are crying. You are mourning. You are complaining. You are grumbling. You are murmuring. Ha. Ah, I've been married 10 years. No children. Ha. Ah, hey, this, 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 uh, ah, this husband. I want to divorce him. I need to go get, get another husband. Ha. Ah, oh, I've been married. I have only guests. I don't have any boys. I have to divorce this man. He doesn't have a male child in his loins. And then you divorce your husband. You are looking for husband number two that will give you male child. Unfortunately, he gives you more female children. And you say, this God, you are wicked. Did God send you? Did he send you? Did you pray? Did you ask him? Woman of God, I was told that I was a prophet. That is one problem I have. You were told you are a prophet. Before somebody told me that I'm an evangelist, God told me that I'm an evangelist. If you are a prophetess, God will first tell you. God will tell you that you are a prophetess. He will reveal it to you first. Before somebody else will confirm what God has said to you. Somebody cannot just come and tell me I'm a bishop. When God has not told me that I'm a bishop. You, do you feel that you are a prophetess? If you are a prophetess, there will be traits of a prophetess. There will be gifting of a prophetess. Do you have them? Do you have them? Divine, can you on the AC? I'm hot. Thanks, darling. Baba, Divine. Oh, he's got earphone in his ears. Divine, can you on the AC, please? Thank you. When God wants to, if you are a prophetess, one, you will see the trait of a prophetess. You will see the signs that you are a prophetess. You will see the giftings. You will be operating in the gifts of a prophetess. Do you even know what it takes to be a prophetess? People just jump at me, prophet, prophet. I watch them and I shake my head and laugh. Prophet, prophet. But do you know what it takes to be a prophet? Do you know what it takes to be a prophetess? 
Do you know what it, what it takes to be a woman of God or a man of God, a preacher? Do you know what it takes? Somebody says you are a prophet. Has God revealed to you yourself that you are a prophetess or you are a prophet? God will reveal it to you first. And then somebody will confirm it to you. Some people begin to act by what other people say. Go to God. When somebody says, oh, I see you, you are this, you are that. Go on your knees. Take your time out. Go and seek God. Lord, reveal to me if this is true. When you take three days fasting and prayer, God did not say anything, then it's a lie. Because if you go to God, he will confirm it through his word or through a message like this or something. He will drop something in your spirit or he will confirm it with his word. He will confirm it with his word. He will confirm it with his word. Listen, it is not everybody now you see. Pastors, prophets, prophetess that are from God. Evangelists, all of us. Is it all of us that are from God? First of all, even test the spirit that is using that person. Is it from God? God will reveal to you. And he will endow you with the gift that you need to function in that office that he has called you into. If he has called you into any office, he will gift you for that office. He will not just call you and will not give you a gift. When God called me, God, since 2000, 1990, no? Since 1990, my daughter was three years old, 94, 5, six, since 1997. God told me that he has chosen me. He has called me into women ministry. He told me everything. He told me that he has called me to be an evangelist. He told me about my future. He told me I was going to travel abroad. Then I was in Africa. He told me things about my future that has come to pass. And when the time comes for me to go into ministry, I will know it. Since 1997, I did not answer this call until last year here. I started preaching last year. I started uh, when the time came. That time, when the time came for me to answer this call, I did not get up and come on Facebook. During one of my devotions in the morning, the Lord, the Lord told me to go on Facebook and start a page. I have a page, a call to worship, prayer, and encouragement. He said, you are an encourager. And how many of you can bear witness that I am an, an encourager? Even before somebody told me, when you guys are saying, wow, I'm so encouraged, God already told me years ago that I am an encourager. That last year, when I that money, he told me, you go as a call to prayer, worship, and encouragement because I have made you an encourager. He told it to me, not pastor, no pastor said it to me. People are already confirming right from time. The, the character, the, the trait is already there. If you, if you know me from the past years coming, you will see that that is me. I, I encourage people. I am an encourager. You cannot come. And you see me, I'm so relaxed talking to people. I'm not in a rush. Except if I'm going out, I'll tell you, oh, I'm busy now. Can I call you back later? And I will sit down and listen. Eh? I can listen to somebody for two hours. Not every people, not everybody has that kind of patience that God has given to me. Why? Because it is my ministry. He first confirmed it to me. Before men of God, any church I attended in this past 20 something years, 20 years, the pastor will always confirm, wow, you are an evangelist. I will say, yes, sir, I know. They were confirming what God already told me. Nobody told me, I, I think God is telling me you are an evangelist for the first time. No, God told me first that I am an evangelist. Before other people began to confirm it, that I am an evangelist. And when the time came for me, during this process, I have been a woman leader, assistant leader, women leader, assist, assistant woman leader. I have been a choir leader. I have been, I have been leading offices from, he was training me in all these years. Then I was ordained a deaconess. I did not just jump, wake up in the morning and in one day, I did not just wake up in the morning and that, the next day I became an evangelist. No, there was steps. Step by step training that the Lord, that divine, see that. Who is knocking? Divine, go and check if your daddy wants something. There were steps that I took to get here today, and the final one was happened in February when God Himself anointed me, and then gave me an additional ministry, which is healing and deliverance ministry. It wasn't until February this year that he gave me that gift. But he was training me, training me, training me. That is how God works. I did not just jump up and jump into ministry from nowhere. There are steps. 
it took me through a journey to confirm that. And so that is God for you. That is how God operates. God cannot say you're an evangelist or a pastor. Then tomorrow you just jump. No training. No nothing. He does it step by step. Now, these people were angry because they were told the truth. They were angry because they were told the truth. I need to round it up because I want to pray for a sister. Sister Joanna, are you still online? Leave a comment. Let me know you are still online. Sister Joanna, if you are still online, leave a comment. I'm going to pray for you. I'm trying to wrap up. If you're online, leave a comment so that I'm going to so I'll pray for you. I'm going, to, I'm going to wrap this up and then we are going to play, pray. And then I'm going to pray for you. Look at that. He was even, they even refused to listen to the reasoning. They refused to listen to encouragement. And now they were ready to even fight the servants of God. He was, they were ready to fight the servants of God. And then this is the Lord's reaction in verse 11. Say so the Lord spoke to Moses. We are reading Numbers, 20, Numbers 13 and 14. Numbers 14, 11 says, The Lord spoke to Moses. How long will these people continue to turn against me? How long will they continue? They show that they don't trust me or believe in my powers. Okay, don't go anywhere, sis. I'm going to invite you shortly so that I'll pray for you. Or believe in my powers. In spite of my many miracles I have done among them, I will kill them all with a terrible sickness. I will destroy them and I will use you to make another nation. Your nation will be greater and stronger than these people. Did you see God's reaction to murmuring, doubt, unbelief? God hates it. God hates it. God hates it. What do you see about yourself? What do you see about your life? What do you see about you? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Hara kapo shekeria. Maskende de lebo shekeri garabas. How long? How long will these people continue to turn against me? Are you that one? When everything is working, Jesus is your best friend. He's your father. When things are not working, he becomes your enemy. Are you one of such? Do you know there are Christians like that? They backslide because God has not answered them. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Gail. God bless you. Are you that one? Because God has not done it, you give up on yourself. You give up on your future. You give up on everything. Are you? Are you? Are you that one person? Ha! You see, God says, see, oh my God. God was provoked by their attitude. He said, they show that they don't trust me or believe in my powers. Are you like that? Do you trust God? Do you believe in his powers? Hi. Hey, Jesus, have mercy. In spite of my many miracles I have done among them, I will kill them all with a terrible sickness. Look at God. Look at his anger. His anger was kindled against them. He says, I will kill them all with a terrible sickness. I will destroy them and I will use you to make another nation. Look at God. Look at his, look at his anger, his wrath. But Moses being Moses interceded. Moses began to intercede. Lord, no. Said so so if you do this, the Egyptians he Moses reminded God of his supremacy. In verse 13, from 13, 13 to 16. Go and read it. Say, so you must, I'm jumping to 15. Say, you must not kill these people now. If you kill them, all the nations who have heard about your power will say, the Lord was not able to bring them into the land he promised, so he killed them in the desert. Moses began to stand in the gap for these people. 
Moses began to stand in the gap. And then verse 17, so now, Lord, show your strength. Show it the way you said you would. You said the Lord is slow to become angry. He is full of great love. He forgives those who are guilty and break the law. But he always punishes those who are guilty. He punishes them. And he also punishes their children, their grandchildren. And even their great-grandchildren for these bad things. Now show your great love. To those people forgive their sins forgive them the same way you have been forgiving them since the time they left egypt until now because from when they left egypt until today when things does not uh, uh, work well they began to complain even before now just god has killed some of them because of greed go and read it in verse 11 and 12 when the manna came they became so greedy they pack and pack and pack and pack and pack Plenty. When God saw the, the way the greed, he was angry and killed those people. He, the food killed them. And yet they are not still afraid. What about you and I? What do you see? Do you doubt God? Are you like them? When things are good, you are good. When things are not good, you turn away. You go to the harbor list. You go to seek help elsewhere. You go to seek help anywhere, eh, eh, in other places. No! We shouldn't do that. As the children of God. We shouldn't do that. It's either you are for God or you are against him. Don't love God when things are good and hate him when things are bad. The Lord answered in verse 20. Yes, I will forgive the people as you asked. But I tell you the truth as surely as I live. And as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth. I make you this day. I make you this promise. None of the people I led out of Egypt will ever see the land of Canaan. They saw my glory and the great signs that I did in Egypt and in the desert. But they disobeyed me and tested me ten times. How many times have you disobeyed God? How many times have you tested him? How many times? We have seasons. Seasons come and seasons go. But the God we serve, he never changes. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. That is our God. He is able. Say, but none of these people who turn the gates will ever enter. There are consequences for some action. There are consequences for some behavior. But my servant Caleb was different. He follows me completely. Look at God. You think he doesn't know you. He knows you. He knows me. He knows us. He knows our heart. He knows our thought. He knows what we are doing. He searches us. He said, Caleb, my servant, is different. He follows me completely. Are you following him completely? In good. Caleb also saw the giants. Caleb also had the same encounter with every one of them. But Caleb was not looking at the size of the giants. He was looking at the size of the God that delivered them out of Egypt. He follows me completely, says the Lord. So I will bring him into the land that he has, that he has already seen. And his people will get... And these people will get that land. And the Amalekites and the Canaanites are living in the valley. So tomorrow you must leave this place. Go back to the desert. On the, la uh, uh, on the road to the sea. God now, you see him, merciful father. He still forgave them. But the only thing, the consequences for them is that they will not see the land. That he will, they will not see that Canaan that he has promised them. That is why when you begin to turn against the Lord. There are consequences. That is how many people, they have put themselves in trouble. When you go outside the will of God, you go outside the plan of God, you begin to fall victim to so many things. We are on Numbers 14 now. Verse 26 says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this evil, God even calling his own people, evil people, continue to complain against me? I have heard their complaints and they are gripping. So tell them, the Lord says that he will surely do all these things to you that you complain about. This is what will happen to you. You will die in this desert. Every person who is 20 years old, this is God still confirming his actions against the children of God. Oh, I am the Lord and I have spoken and I promise that I will do these things 
to all these evil people. They have come together against me, so they will all die here in this desert. Ha, complain, disobedience, carries penalty. God doesn't like it. God doesn't like it. You see yourself in the future, you see yourself as a failure. You see yourself, everything negative, you see yourself like that. Don't do that. You begin to doubt the promises of God concerning you. What do you see? These people, they saw giants. But Caleb saw people that, that, that Caleb and Joshua, they did not see giants. They just saw people, saw things. What about David and Goliath? If David had looked at the size of Goliath, he wouldn't have used ordinary stones to keep stone as big and grabbed as, as Goliath was. He took only one stone to kill him because God wanted to disgrace him. You need to understand that the God you serve is powerful. The God you serve is mighty. I keep telling you guys that no pastor, no evangelist, no prophet, nobody can help you. The only person that can help you is Jesus. We are only instruments in his hands. Most people now you have made evangelists, you have made pastors, you have made uh, prophets, prophetess your gods or mini gods. God hates it. His glory he will share with no man. His glory he will share with no man. His glory he will share with no man. Oh, prophesy, prophet. Prophesy, evangelist. You begin to depend and rely. And then prophets of doom will be released your way. They begin to tell you something that is not even from God. And you begin to fall victim to their manipulations. You know, you guys, some people, they like lies. Tell you now. Hmm. As I see you so, you don't finish. Your own is over. It is over. I saw them. They were feeding you, feeding your uncle this one in the night. Maybe you didn't see it. And because of that, you carry poison in your stomach. I need to pray for you. You need to so you need to even now they are collecting money for prayer. You have to give me 100,000 naira, 200,000 naira, 500 euros. I need to go on the mountain. And maybe now said they will go and buy you special oil. I want to go and buy you special anointing oil. Special this waste of time. Waste of time and money and resources because it will not bring any solution. If you like, buy that oil for 1,000 pounds, 1,000 euro, 1,000 dollars, 1,000 whatever amount. Without Christ, it is useless. Without salvation, it is useless. These are the things you get freely on this platform. Your own water, your own water, pray on it, it will heal you. Your own anointing oil you bought with your own money, we anoint it, you use it, it works for you. What are you looking for? People now are bottling water and oil to sell. And you now, because of fear, you are buying. You are only there to buy. This one you are getting free, it doesn't have value. Assuming I start putting price on it now, come and see how you would. It's not some people treasure it, or some people don't joke with it. Some people, because it's free, some people don't take it serious. That sister that was pregnant, that they said the baby, the baby, if you see this guy, open her mouth, his mouth, and is busy enjoying that water. They told her before that the baby is not forming very well. She went for a scan and they told her this your baby is growing as developed. Just within the space of how many weeks? Two weeks. That baby has grown. The baby has developed in her stomach. This is the same baby that they, she says she's coming. She's waiting to put to bed. She will come and share her testimony. This same baby that they said is not forming well. That this baby will be, when she gives birth to it, that the baby will become, even though it's full time, the baby will look like a premature. Now, the baby, the report has changed. The doctors are surprised. Because that baby is drinking the water. She said every time the baby is drinking water. Even in the scan, they saw the scan, they told the scan told that this your baby is drinking too much water. And the water is doing something in her womb to the baby. The baby is developing well now. They said the baby is matured now. She was telling me today. The baby is matured now. She does not joke with everywhere. She was showing me water. She has one water near her bed because I pray for a lot of bottles of water for her because she's pregnant and the baby is drinking. So I told her, go and bring plenty of bottles of water. I anointed it. She put one near, even in the hospital bag, she wants to take to the hospital to give birth. She has one bottle of the water inside. I was laughing today, this woman. I said, ah, look, I put water, one beside me. One, any corner she faces, the water is there. She, she just carry it and drink it. She's thirsty. 
It's not the water, it is our faith in Christ Jesus. Plus the water in the spiritual realm is no longer water. It is the blood of Jesus that has been shed for us. All you have to do is to believe. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. This water, she got all these bottles. Assuming she wants to buy one bottle. One bottle of one small bottle. I see on some pages or website. One small bottle is $50. I'll be $80 or $50. Small to color bottle of water. And anointing oil. Then she has big, big bottles. Calculate it if she was to pay small, small bottle like that. How many can she buy? How many can she buy? Freely we have received. On this platform, freely we are giving it. But be a blessing because we have things to do with money. I'm not going to sell anything to you because I want your money. God did not send me to do that. But then I will not stop asking you for money for programs. And most of you are blessing the programs. That is how to do it. I don't have to, 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 to deceive you because I want your money. I will tell you the truth. Some of you bless me on my birthday. And I freely because you love me. And I appreciate it. And I'm already, I've already started praying for you guys. I know I've not called some of you. I've started praying for some people. Some of you that bless me personally. I pray generally for everybody, but I'm praying extra for those people that blessed me on my birthday. That is the way to go. Stress, no stress from your own heart. Freely. You don't treasure it. God is able to do all things. You yourself. I keep telling you, you don't need me. Stand in faith. Believe God. Take your water. Take your. You have a nightmare. You are crying. For what? Carry your water. Pray on it. Pray. Send those demons to hell. Pray. It will work for you. It will work for you. Carry your anointing oil. Ha, thank you, Jesus. Why then are you afraid? The children of Israel were so afraid because of those giants. But David was not afraid. Say, so who are you that is making ridicule of the name of my God? Today, the Lord has delivered you into my hands. That is faith. That is boldness. And David took only one stone, five stones. Only one was used to kill Goliath. What is that Goliath in your life that is making you to fear? What is that giant in your life that is causing you to doubt God? It is nothing before God. It is nothing before God. It is nothing before God. The God we serve is able. He is able. He is able to save. He is able to deliver. Come on. Come on. What is in your heart? What are you thinking about? What do you see in your own life? Do you see a successful woman? Do you see a woman that is on mission for God? Do you see a winner? Do you see an accountant? Do you see somebody that is going to rule and reign? Do you see somebody that is making it? Do you see a millionaire? What do you see? When you look at yourself, what do you see? Do, do you see somebody that God has anointed? Do you see somebody that is blessed? Or do you see somebody that is caught, frustrated? What do you see, my people? What do you see? When you look in yourself, what do you see? Are you seeing a failure? Or a victor? Whom do you see? What do you see? Do you see that one that have no strength to fight? Or that one that has already given up? What do you see? Whom do you see? Are you letting your situation to dictate what you see? Hmm. Are you letting your situation to dictate what you see? You begin to confess negativity. You begin to confess things that are negative. What do you see? It matters what you see because what you see will lead and guide you into prayer. For that, they say, <laughs> pray for those things that are not as though they are. You have not seen it. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, but the evidence not seen. Yes, the journey may be tough. It may be rough, but then you don't see it rough. You don't see it tough. You don't see it like that. Whom you see is what God says. Who, what you see is what God says you are. Whom you see is whom God says you are. Not what the situation says you are. I'm telling you. 
You see this. I'm still gonna say it in the in the in the program. There was a time my daughter packed her bags and left my house. She left. That time we were like cat and rat. As a mother, a preacher, how do you think I felt? Hmm. Hmm. The devil wanted to use it to distract me. The devil wanted to use this situation to frustrate me. The devil wanted to use this one to cause me to lose focus. But you know what? I choose not to see it. I kept loving my daughter. I fasted and I prayed. And I committed her to God and I forgot about her. I just, you know, when you prayed, you, there was a day she called police on us. Because she left the house one morning. Me and my, father, my husband, we chased her. Where are you going? I'm not leaving. The father was about to die. I said, no, this is what she wants. Leave her. She called the police to say one thing or the other. Because a friend came. They brought, what are we talking about? <laughs> what do you see? Police came. They turned against her. Because your parents are trying to teach you to be good. This, that, that. <laughs> police joined us to fight her. But, <laughs> yes, was it yesterday or this morning? I was just crying. This morning. When this same girl is the one that called us, telling me her results. Because my daughter is intelligent. She's born to be great. I knew it right from time. And the devil wanted to play hanky packy. The spiritual is what controls the physical. I know what I was going through that time. I go to church, I do my thing like nothing is wrong. I choose not to worry. I choose not to see all of these things that the devil tried so hard to make me see. I still come online, I preach, I pray, I pray for people. I do all that I needed to do. I just forgot about her. Sincerely. I just let her, I gave her to God. And left her with God and moved on. I did not think about it. I did not worry about it. Nothing. Nothing. Suddenly. Suddenly. Since before the exam, the living set exam, my daughter changed suddenly. Suddenly she changed. This girl become so homely. This girl has always been like this. But the moment we relocated and moved into a new environment and a new school, she now, the devil now positioned this agent of darkness around her in school. So when the day, the last year she became friends with them was when this nonsense started. I knew when it started. It was when she became friends with these people. Alcohol. Misbehavior. This girl is not like that at all. She's a good girl, obedient to the core. She's a bubbling, happy girl. Suddenly, in the twinkle of an eye, she changed before me. I began to send arrows to them. I never knew God answered my that prayer because she had, well, I just said, Lord, put enmity between my daughter and all of them that are deceiving her. I began to pray. That was my prayer points. Fasted on it, prayed on it. Enmity between her and them. I did not even know the courage. She didn't say anything until it was last week. She was telling me, oh, mom, do you know me and this and that we are no longer friends? I said, mm, since when? What happened? She began to explain, yeah, they began to misbehave. They began to avoid her. <laughs> and you think God does not answer prayers? Good evening, Sister Mary. You think God does not answer prayers? They began to avoid my daughter. The fire was too much. Those demons wanted to spoil my child, pollute my daughter for me. The fire was too much. They will now begin to avoid her. Not my daughter avoiding them. They will see my daughter and avoid her. She said, she was now telling me that uh, she don't know what happened. Suddenly, they started going out on their own. They will not call her. They will go here. They will not call her. In my mind, I'm like, mm -hmm, that is my God. That was my God in action. <laughs> in my heart, I didn't say to her, in my heart, I said, thank you, Jesus. So 
that was how God caught them off. Suddenly, like just the same way they came, the same way they packed their bag and left her. God restored my daughter back to me. Today we are like five and six. And then when she was going to do this high exam, my, my husband was asking me, what happened? Our daughter just changed suddenly. I said, my God happened. My God happened. And that is the truth. Don't give up. What do you see? I did not see the rubbish that was happening. Now she was telling me, ah, mom, that alcohol is, so I did not really drink it all. She said, it was those my friends. They were telling me that alcohol is so good. Alcohol is nice. It's very uh, yummy. And so because she is big, she's tall. She looks older than her age. She's bigger than all of them. She went into the shop and bought it for them. And then she tasted. I said, when I, I only tasted it once. But that once I tasted it, it was awful. It was so awful. I, I, I hated it. She even hated it. I hated it and I never took it again. I just tasted it once because they were telling me it was so good. It was this, it was that. But when I tasted it, I saw that it was a lie. It wasn't good. It does not taste nice at all. This is my daughter now telling me these things. The same girl that told me I hate you because me, my house, you have to play by my rules. And when me, I know they bend. You had that. Me, I was ready to serve to call social. Let her come and carry her. <laughs> if that is the one she wants. But look at God. I forgot. I did not see. What do you see? I did not see the trouble. Yes, I felt the pinch. As a mother, I felt the pinch. But I did not see that. I looked above that. And I kept speaking into her life. Telling the devil, listen, you are wasting your time. This girl is going to be great. She's going to be great. She's, look at her, A stars, A stars, A stars, all her papers. Except for one B. Everything, A, 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 double A stars. One A star, one A, and one B. Only one B, all her papers. A to Z, she cleared it. This is the child that the devil wanted to destroy because they see that she's born to be great. Because they see that she's a, she's, I already know that she's a great woman. I know. What do you see? Oh, you are not pregnant. And you are seeing that you are not pregnant. See yourself pregnant. Pray it, it will manifest. Lord, thank you because I am. It is your confection. I see me that time I'm panicking, running from one pillar to post, running from uh, uh, pastor to pastor, running from prophesy, prophesy, running to the. No, I took it to my God in prayer. And that same God that answers by fire answered me. Today you need to see my guest so happy, very lively. Hugging and kissing me. I love you. I love you. I love you. She will come. She discuss with me. She shares her secrets with me. We are the best of friends now. But you can't believe that there was a time that we were like that. Cat and rats. God restored my child. Brought me back my child. You cannot work for God. <laughs> and the devil makes a mince meat out of you. It's not possible. What time is it? Nine. When did you start? Eight, ten. I'm just checking the time because we want to pray. So what do you see, brethren? I want to encourage you. You are 45, you are 50, you are not married. Don't see yourself. I'm, Thank you, Lord, because my husband is here. Forget about it. Once you fast, you pray, hand it over to God. Just go your, your way like nothing is wrong. See yourself already married. See yourself already pregnant. See yourself. See your wedding. The picture it planned. Get your wedding dress. <laughs> Get your baby clothes. Lord, thank you because my son, my daughter is coming to wear this clothes. Thank you, Father, because this is my wedding dress. I'm going to use it. If you buy your wedding dress, now you lose, you add weight. You're on your own. Oh. <laughs> you have to maintain your weight. <laughs> but one thing I know is that God never forsakes his own. He's a faithful father. Don't look at your mountains, but look at the God that created the mountains. Don't look at your valley. I have been through some valleys. I have. I have. Being a woman of God, being a Christian does not mean that. It does not only mean that, always mean that it's going to be easy. But I refuse to let that situation control me. I refuse to let that situation rule my life. I refuse to let that situation tell me what to do, dictate how I should live. No, I refuse. I refuse. 
<laughs> Sister Ellen, which one be the laugh now? <laughs> oh, don't add weight. You on your own. I'm sure it's that one. <laughs> it's true. You buy your wedding dress today. You can't add weight. You on your own, though. <laughs> you can pay for it in the store. Don't collect it yet. Eh? Yeah, let the husband come and then you can go and get your wedding dress. Boy, it's coming. Oh, a job. Ma shake the gebo send the color of Shandaha. Ma send the kura da ba 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 ba. We want to pray now. Where have you doubted God? Where have you murmured? Where have you complained? God hates these things. He does not want us to do it. We are going to pray now. And Sister Joanna, get ready. I'm going to invite you in a minute, so I'll pray for you. Let us begin to cry to the Lord for mercy. Wherever, in all areas that I have doubted you, Lord, I am sorry. In all areas that I have doubted you, Lord, I am sorry. In all areas that I have murmured, that I have, I have not done what I ought to have done, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry, Jesus. I am sorry, Jesus. I am sorry, Jesus. Begin to ask him for mercy. Lord, I am sorry. See, God's promise he was going to kill those people because of their disobedience. Where have you been disobedient to God? God is asking you. God is asking you to go right. You are going left. God is telling you, go straight. You are going backwards. God is telling you, okay, stand still. You are moving. What is God telling you that you are disobedient to? Begin to ask him for forgiveness. Say, Lord, I am sorry. He's a merciful father. We are lucky in this time and age that we are in the era of grace. Back in the days, it was instant judgment. It was instant judgment for, 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 for anybody that faulted. But we are in the era of grace. Where have you doubted God? God is telling you, this is the way I want you to go. You are looking at that, we say, this one. Maybe God even bring one husband for you. You, you are expecting to be married to a millionaire. Or somebody that has green, green passport. And God, bring, God just brings somebody that doesn't even have any documents to you. You are like, ah, this one. Hmm. You are looking for a short husband. God brings a tall one. You are looking for a tall husband. He brings a short husband. You go, ah, this one. Hmm. No. What if that is the one? Huh? What is that situation? You are applying for this and that job. And God is saying, don't worry about that job. You go this way. I'm going to make a way for you. You are afraid. You are doubtful. Begin to ask God for mercy. And then begin to say, Lord, I cancel every spirit of fear ruling and ruling my life in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of fear. I refuse every spirit of fear. I denounce, I reject every spirit of fear and doubt. Begin to cast them out. They are demons from the pit of hell. Oh, my father, you are God forever. Are you praying? Ask God for mercy and then begin to cast out all the spirit of fear. Doubt. Disobedience. Say, Lord, today I cast them out. I delete them from my life. I delete them, oh God, from my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Ma shekeri da ba sende kala da baj. Begin to say, Lord, deliver me from fears. Deliver me from fear. Oh, doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. Deliver me, O oh God. Rakapos kende kuye de boy shekeri arabaj. Oh, Jesus. Lord, deliver me from fear and unbelief. Deliver me from doubts. Lord, deliver me from them in the name of Jesus. I refuse them. I reject them. In the name of Jesus. Joanna, I'm inviting you now to come so that I'll pray for you. I told you I was going to pray for you. I'm inviting you. Just click the green button to accept the call. Sister Joanna, I want to invite you now. I want to invite you. Are you declining the call or you don't know how to receive it? Answer it. 
Begin to pray for yourself. Sister Joanna, um, Rakababa Shekeria. You might have to rotate your phone sideways. Let it rotate. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we worship you, Lord. Have mercy on us. In any area of our lives, oh God, that we have doubted you. That we have doubted you, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Turn your phone sideways. Turn your phone sideways. Sometimes you need to turn it sideways. Make sure your phone is on rotation as well. That spirit of death following everywhere. Today they are living in the name of Jesus. Powers trying to frustrate your life. Heaven will frustrate them. In the name of Jesus. Turn your phone sideways. It's still saying adding. Turn your phone. Put your phone on rotation. Put your phone on rotation. Put your phone on rotation. Let me invite you again. Lifting hands. Bowing hearts. Is all we've come to do. I'm inviting you again. Uh -huh. It's connecting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to Jesus. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, you reign on high. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Rakaba, what is happening to you? What is happening to you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. So what is the problem? What do you want me to pray for you about? What is going on with you? Uh, I just feel the, this evil spirit is pursuing me, spirit of death. Huh? I, I, I feel the spirit of death pursuing me. You've... All the time when I sleep, I can see death, people dying, I see graveyards. Uh, attending people's uh, funeral. You see that you feel the spirit of death pursuing you. You see dead people in your sleep. Mm. Yes. You see graves in your sleep. Yes, I do. Are you a Christian? Are you born again? Yes. You are born yes. again. Not that you go to church, but you have a relationship with God. You are born again. Yes. And also, I talked to you in the morning, and I told you I was going to pray for you today. A while ago, you said you used to eat in the dream. Do you still eat in the dream? Uh, no, I don't, but I see uh, my teeth falling in the dream. Your own teeth falling in the dream. Yes. I've done that a few times. A few times, more than once. Mm. And also, you said yes. before you used to have sex in the dream a while ago. That was, yes, a while back. But since that time, nobody has prayed any deliverance prayer for you. Mm. No? No. Okay, I want you to rededicate yourself to God. I want to pray for you. Is your chest beating fast? Yes, a bit. My chest is beating fast. Hallelujah. Now put your hands on your forehead. Begin to surrender your life to Jesus again. Say, Lord, I rededicate myself to you. Lord, I rededicate myself to you. I give myself you. to you, Jesus. I give myself Wash to you, Wash me Jesus. from every sin. 
Wash me from Wash everything. Wash me from everything. Every unrighteousness cleanse me. Wash from me all, all, all and cleanse unrighteousness. Me. From all unrighteousness. From all unrighteousness. Cleanse me with your blood. Cleanse me. Purify me. Purify me. Sanctify me. In Sanctify Jesus' me. name. Now begin to address those issues. Say, you spirit of death. You spirit and of you death. break every covenant with that spirit of death. I break every covenant with spirit in the name of, of Jesus. In the name I of command, Jesus. Say, I command you in the name of Jesus. I command you, spirit of death, in the name Go of Jesus. Go back to hell where you belong. Go back to hell. The blood of Jesus have set you free. Are you shaking? Yes. Say the blood of Jesus have set you free. The blood of Jesus has set you free. The blood of Jesus have set you free. The blood of Jesus has set me free. The blood of Jesus have set you free. The blood of Jesus. Tell yourself you will not die but live. I will not die. To but glorify leave. the name of the Lord. To glorify the in name the of land the of the living. In the the land you of the spirit living. husband planning to kill you. Yeah. The spirit husband planning today to today kill you. Today I denounce you. Denounce him. Today I and denounce today you. Today you divorce him. him. And today so I have no relationship him. with him anymore. I don't have any. And you command him to go to hell where he belongs. Go to hell. I was feeding you in your dream. Pray any power that is feeding you in your dream. Any power that is feeding you. You in command my dream. them now in Jesus' name. Close your eyes and pray and focus. Like, you command them now. I command you to, to stop. Like I command you to leave you me. You don't. Now. You do Jesus. not belong to them. I do not you belong, not belong to, you. to Jesus. And the blood of Jesus have set you free. The blood of Put your Jesus hand on your forehead again. Say, Jesus set me free. Jesus, Jesus me deliver free. me. Jesus, Jesus me. deliver you now. Jesus. Now listen, listen to me. I want to pray me. for you. Fa Just close your eyes. Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your head. Put the camera well on your face. Move, move the camera to you so I can see your face very well. Are you okay? I want to pray for stay, stay in one place. Yes. I want you to stay in one place. I want to pray for you. Right now, all over you, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Close your eyes. All over you, right now, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. 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 Holy Spirit, right now, pump fire into her. Pump fire into her. You spirit of death, hear me and hear me well. This is the daughter of the Most High God. You have no power over her anymore. Every covenant she had with you or that was made on her behalf or by her, however, every covenant of death today is broken with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has set her free. The blood of Jesus has set her free. You have no power over this one anymore. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command you, pack your load, your deposits, everything you came with, into her life. Pack them and go to hell where you belong. In the name of Jesus, you spirit husband that wants to kill her, that is planning to destroy her life, her glory, her destiny. Hear me and hear me well. I command you in the name of Jesus, pack your bag, your baggages, your load, everything you came with, and go to hell where you belong. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have no power over her life. You have no power over her powers that are feeding you or that fed you in your dream in the past. I command them all right now. Go to hell. 
everything inside your body that is not of God, any power inside of you manipulating your life, your glory, your destiny. I command them all out. Go to hell. That is where you belong. Leave this woman alone in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, right now, begin to pour fire into her. Pour fire into her. 20 buckets of fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 buckets of fire on your head. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, begin to torment every spirit husband, spirit of death, powers from the marine, powers from the coven, powers from any demonic kingdom. Right now, every evil altar from your forefathers, ancestral spirit, controlling that lineage is broken over your life. In the name of Jesus, fire. Holy Ghost, torment every spirit that is not of God. Begin to torment that spirit husband. Torment that spirit husband. Your time is up in this body. Your time is up in this body. Your time is up in this body. Right now, pack all your load and begin to get out in the name of Jesus. Who are you and what are you doing in this body? Your time is up. You cannot frustrate her anymore. You cannot torment her anymore. She does not belong to you anymore. She now belongs to Jesus. And the blood of Jesus has set her free. You cannot kill this one. You cannot kill her because Jesus died that she will live. And so right now, I command you, it's time. You have to go. You need to go. You need to leave her alone. She does not belong to you anymore. You, she does not belong to you anymore. Your time is up. You know that your time is up. Right now, begin to pack your loads, all your deposits, all your demons, all your spirits, and go to hell. I command you in the name of Jesus. Go to hell. That is where you belong. Holy Ghost, torment this demon. Spirit husband, torment him. Spirit wife, torment him. Spirit of death, torment them until they are ready to go. In the mighty name of Jesus, all over you, on your head is fire. On your chest is fire. On your stomach is fire. From your head to your toe, on fire. Fire, Holy Ghost, keep pouring fire until these wicked spirits, agents of death, are ready to go in the name of Jesus. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Right now, right now, your time is up. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? You have to go. You have to go. You have no choice. You have no choice. I am not giving you an option. Pack all your load, everything you've put in her, and go to hell. Because that is where you belong. Fire all over you. Fire all over you. Fire all over you. Keep tormenting this demon. Keep tormenting every evil spirit inside of her. Holy Ghost, keep tormenting them. Keep pouring fire inside of her. Keep pouring fire inside of her. Make sure there is no hiding place for them. Make sure there is no hiding place for this wicked spirit of death that wants to destroy the life of the soma. Make sure there is no hiding place. Holy Spirit, keep tormenting them until they are ready to go. Let me know when you are ready to go. Let me know. Tell me. I know you can hear me and I know you can speak. Let me know when you are ready to leave this woman alone. Right now, continue to torment them. Torment them. Torment them. Torment them. Pour more fire. Holy Ghost. Pour more fire. Holy Ghost. Pour more fire. Holy Ghost. Father, release my angels right now to her. Begin to flog this agent of death, spirit of death. Begin to flog this spirit husband that has been molesting, manipulating her life, her glory, and her death. In the name of Jesus. Where are you? Joanna, where are you? Hello, where are you? I can't see you. Break a post in the head. Mas sente de boy shake her. Joanna, where are you? What happened? Mas kende de boy. Father God, we worship you. We worship you. Uh huh. Look at that. Ah. Uh. She's gone offline. Let's wait a little bit. Mask in the boy, she 
Father, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Rege bo shikeri adaba. Ma sende kai adaba. Shikeri adaba. Rege lige lige boz ken mere le boz. Mas ken de bo kai anda. Rege bo sende kai adaba boz. We decree and declare that she will not die but live to glorify the name of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm just going to wait for her to come back if she will come back. Father, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. See the way she was shaking, those wicked spirits. In the name of Jesus. She's offline. Let me check if she's on messenger. Raga boy shikeria. Mask and the little boy shikeria laga boy. in the name of jesus let's just begin to worship the lord i'll just wait a few more minutes if she comes i don't know if she will come because she's not a messenger either it could be her network or the phone is dead or i don't know what happened you know these demons that is what they do when they don't want to go they'll start cutting the network they start cutting the network but the blood of jesus is going to set her free even if we have to go and do it on messenger later. I'm just waiting to see if she'll come back. But she's not back yet. With that are here, let's just begin to appreciate God. Let's just begin to thank Him. Let's begin to worship Him. Let's begin to exalt Him. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is the Lord, He changeth not. Father, let your name be praised forever. Let your name be praised forever. Let your name be praised forever. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. Father, we exalt your name. We say, let your name be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Imela, Imela, Okaka, Onyekelua, Imela, Imela, Ezemo. Holy Ghost, we worship you, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Just worship him before we go. Just worship him before we go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we glorify your holy name. We say, may your name be praised forever. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We exalt you. We adore you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Let your name be praised. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We are going to go. If she comes back, maybe we'll go and do it on Messenger. We'll go and complete it on Messenger. I don't know what happened to her phone. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to appreciate your holy name. Thank you for everyone online. Thank you for your goodness, for your grace and your mercies. Let your name be praised forever. Cover everyone in the blood of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you will meet with us. Father God, you will answer us in the name of Jesus. Father, meet us at the point of our needs. Father, I begin to pray for everyone watching that none of us will die but live to glorify your name in the land of the living. May your name forever be glorified. May your name forever be magnified. 
May your name forever be exalted. May your name forever be lifted in the name of Jesus. Cover everyone in the blood of Jesus. I cover you, cover myself, my family in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. May your name be praised forever in Jesus' name. I pray for you that it is well for you. It is well for your family in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, may you continue to receive the grace of God, grace of God to fulfill his plans and his purpose for your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for myself, I pray for you, that we will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, our children will bring us joy. Our lives will bring us joy. The plans and the purpose of God will bring us joy. In the name of Jesus, I pray that our spiritual sight be opened, that the Lord will guide us, direct us, show us the way He wants us to go. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is well with all of you. In Jesus' name, tonight the Lord will reveal Himself to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, He will perfect all that concerns you. You will, before the end of this year, Many of you will locate your husbands. Many of you will give birth to your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the name and the glory of the Lord continually be praised in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that none of us will bury our children. In old age, it is our children that will bury us. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, faithful God. Let your name be praised forever. It is well with all of you. In Jesus' name, the God we serve is too much. He is a great God. We will worship him forever. We will serve him forever in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful night rest in the name of Jesus. I decree on, into your lives that it is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.